In this video, I'm gonna be making and comparing a microwave cinnamon roll to a classic cinnamon roll. Hey, my name is Nicole, welcome back to my channel. I saw this video on Tasty this week of this girl who made a four minute, a 40 minute, and a four hour cinnamon roll, and it was so fun. I love cinnamon rolls, but I only ever eat them like once a year, maybe on Christmas morning, and I've actually never made them. To be honest, just thinking about it is a little intimidating, and it always seems like such a daunting thing to make. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty curious about these microwave cinnamon rolls. So today, I'm bringing you with me and we're gonna learn how to make some bomb cinnamon rolls. The recipes we're using today I found on the Tasty website so I'll link those down in the description box below in case you want to follow along or make these recipes later. Okay let's get started. I think we're gonna start with the microwave cinnamon roll because it's the quickest and I want to eat a cinnamon roll. Let's get started with our filling first. In a bowl, we're going to put some melted butter, some brown sugar, and some cinnamon. Then we're gonna mix all of that until it's combined and then set that bowl aside. Now in a large mixing bowl, we're going to crack an egg, add some vanilla, some sugar, whole milk, and whisk all of that together. Now we're gonna add our last and secret ingredient, pancake mix. We're adding the pancake mix as our flour because it already has its leavening agent in it, which is going to make it cook quickly in the microwave. And because most of us have pancake mix in our pantries anyway, so it's pretty helpful. So we're gonna stir this in with a rubber spatula until it's almost combined. Okay, we're almost there. It's kind of sticky. It hasn't really stuck together yet, but I think that's okay. I hope that's okay. Okay, it's set until it's almost combined and it looks like it's almost combined, so we're gonna stop there. Now, the fun part, we're going to flour our surface, get it nice and coated. And now we're just gonna knead our dough until it's smooth. So here you can kind of combine any particles that weren't combined when you mixed it. It smells kind of weird. Mine's really sticky, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of flour. This is looking pretty good. Yay! Okay, we've got our little dough ball. Because now it's time to roll. Rolling pin, give it some flour. You're gonna roll this dough to about half an inch to an inch thick. It doesn't have to be exact, but you want it to be in a rectangle shape. So you can use a spoon or a straight edge to get it as close as you can. And then we're going to add our filling on the top and spread it all around. Oh, I kind of feel like I'm running out of filling. Nah, it'll work, it'll be okay. Then we're gonna start at the bottom and roll our dough all the way up. Okay, our roll is looking nice and cute. I'm just gonna cut it in half. So we're making enough for two. Ooh, look at that swirl. These look amazing. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick them in my mugs. I don't know how these are gonna cook. They're definitely smaller than the mug, but hey, I'm just doing what it says. I'm just gonna add about a tablespoon of water in there so that they don't get too dry when they cook in the microwave. Ah! Eek! Okay, in they go. Actually, I think I'm gonna do them one at a time just to be safe. Okay, let's see how it did. Oh my gosh. Yo, this smells so good. I'm so excited. While the second one is cooking, we're gonna make the icing. All you're gonna need is powdered sugar and whole milk. I'm gonna see if I can make it before the second one gets done. The frosting is super easy. We're basically just mixing powdered sugar with whole milk until we get a glaze-like consistency. Perfect. Okay, it's done. 121 left on the clock. Amazing. Okay, we've got our glaze. Woo! I'm so jazzed about this. Second one's done. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes! Woo! Wow! There they are. Our little beauties. Oh my gosh, they smell so good. Now, for the last part, let's put the glaze on so we can eat them up. Okay, I can't wait any longer. I am diving into this. I'm going right for the center. Oh, it's kind of hard. Maybe I need more frosting? <gasps> okay, not bad. This is really good. For a cinnamon roll made out of pancake mix in the microwave, this is not a bad option. It is a little dry. I think maybe it was my pancake mix that I used or maybe I needed to add more water into my mug, but the flavor is great. Oh my gosh. 
It says to microwave it for a minute 45. No wonder mine are hard. Okay, well, it would help if I read the directions, but that makes so much more sense. Okay, don't microwave them for four minutes. They're a four minute cinnamon roll because it takes a total of four minutes. Goodness. <laughs> Wish I could like give you something to scream. Cool. Okay, that was fun. This one is yummy and so good if you want a cinnamon roll really quick. But if you want something really stellar, keep watching the video. Okay, it's time for the classic cinnamon roll. I'm so excited. Let's jump right in. We're gonna start with milk that's 100 to 110 degrees. It's super important that the milk is this temperature or else the yeast won't bloom the way it's supposed to. So heat it up in the microwave until it reaches 100 to 110 degrees and pour it into a bowl. Now we're gonna add half a cup of sugar and one stick of melted butter. And we're gonna whisk all that together. We wanna get all the sugar dissolved in this liquid. Now we're gonna check the temperature one more time just to make sure it's still at 100 to 110 degrees and that the melted butter didn't heat it up any. If it is hotter than 110, just let it sit for a little bit to cool down. Now we're gonna take our yeast packet and sprinkle it evenly over the top and whisk all of that together. And we're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes so that the yeast can bloom. As you can see, the yeast is nice and bloomed. Now we're gonna add four cups of flour and carefully mix it in with a wooden spoon or a rubber spatula until it's just combined. It's looking so good. Now we're gonna cover it up and let it sit somewhere warm for an hour until it's doubled in size. While we're waiting on the yeast to rise, we're gonna, whoa, hello. We're going to make our filling. We're gonna use brown sugar, some softened butter, and of course, cinnamon. We're gonna mix all that up with a spoon. You're gonna get this really smooth, silky, delicious, yummy smelling filling that we're gonna use for our cinnamon rolls. It's amazing. All right, let's check on our dough. Oh, wow, yum. It has doubled in size. You can poke it a little bit and see that the yeast has bloomed. We're gonna add one more cup of flour to our bowl and some baking soda and a little bit of salt and then mix all that together. Okay, now we're gonna screw this onto our mixer. We're gonna use the dough hook attachment. Get that on, and now we're gonna mix all this. I'm gonna pulse it just a little bit so that the flour doesn't go everywhere. Great, we don't wanna overmix it. Now it's time to roll it out. For this part, it's really important that you use as little flour as possible. You wanna make sure your dough doesn't stick to your surface, but you also don't wanna completely coat it in flour because that's not good. So I'm just gonna do a very, very little bit of flour and then put my dough, whoa, out here. Making a mess already, great. Now we're gonna knead the dough for at least 10 minutes. When you knead, the easiest way is to push with your palms together like this. You wanna push out and then bring it back and fold it over. You know, push out, bring it back, fold it over. The kneading process is really important because it encourages the development of the yeast and starts to build the elasticity and the gluten in the bread. We're gonna be doing this for 10 minutes, so get comfy. There's actually something super therapeutic about kneading bread. Once you kind of get into the rhythm of it, it's pretty fun. One reason I like baking things that take longer is because you kind of become attached to it. It's like your child after you've worked for it for so long and kneaded it for 10 minutes. It just makes the end result that much more satisfying and worth it. I can't believe I microwaved those mugs for four minutes. The good news is there wasn't something wrong with my pancake mix. You'll know your dough is ready when you have a smooth ball and when you poke it, it bounces back. Our dough looks great. Now we're going to roll it out. And just like before, we're gonna try to make a large rectangle. Now, this might be kind of hard, but you don't wanna overwork the yeast too much, but do as large of a rectangle as you can. Okay, amazing. Now we're gonna take our cinnamon butter mixture and spread it out on our dough. I found it easier to put the butter on in sections instead of just all at once because then it's easier to spread out and this process is so much fun. It's so beautiful and so satisfying. Now we're gonna start at the end just like before and we're going to roll up our cinnamon roll. You wanna keep the roll pretty tight so we get that nice swirl and then just push it along and try to keep everything even. If your log isn't even, you can just kind of pat it out like this to make sure everything is equally distributed. Wow, I'm actually surprised by how well that rolled up but now we're gonna cut it. However, we are not I'm not going to use a knife. I'm gonna show you a trick. We're going to be using floss. Yes, floss, because with this technique I'm about to show you, you can get a perfect cut every time and not squash your cinnamon rolls. So we're gonna take a piece of floss 
And then we are going to scooch it underneath the cinnamon roll and we're gonna bring it up just like this and then we're gonna cross the strings and pull. Boom. And we have our perfectly cut cinnamon roll. Oh my gosh, wait! That swirl, look! This is my first time making cinnamon rolls, you guys, so this is a big deal. If I can do it, you can do it. Oh, okay, cool. Um, I'm all out of sorts. Where are my pans? Okay, I'm gonna use some butter and quickly grease um, these pans so that our cinnamon rolls don't stick. You can use a stick of butter or if you save the paper from your butter, you can just use that paper and wipe it all around these pans. I accidentally threw mine away because I forgot. But this will work. It's good to use two nine inch round pans, but I only had one, so I'm just using this little casserole dish as another. It doesn't really matter. You just need something to bake them in. Cutting the cinnamon rolls like this is so satisfying. This is honestly one of my favorite parts of making the whole cinnamon rolls because look at that swirl. Oh my gosh, I am so excited about this. These are gonna be so good. So you're just gonna keep cutting the cinnamon rolls like this until your dough is gone and fill up your pan. Perfect, okay, we've got six in this little casserole dish and then we didn't quite fill this one up. We've got like a massive one here, but this is just kind of my extras pan. Um, these are not quite ready to bake yet. They're about to go into the final stage, which is the proofing stage. We're gonna cover these with a towel and let them sit for at least 30 to 45 more minutes. The yeast needs one more time to rise. These are probably gonna double in size. The waiting is the hardest part because these look so good, but It'll be worth it, I promise. All right, so we're gonna cover this one. And these puppies are gonna go off to a warm place. Two hours later. Okay, the time has come. The proofing stage is over. These were actually under the towel for a little longer than 45 minutes. I had to run to physical therapy. So these have been under a towel for probably two hours and I'm really nervous and excited to see what our little buns look like. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> Look how big they got. Oh my gosh, these look so good. Yes, look. These guys got all the space. So they're like, we're spreading out, man. I wish you could smell these. These smell so good. Now all we have to do is bake them and of course frost them. So we're gonna heat our oven to 350 degrees and bake them for about 25 to 30 minutes. While the cinnamon rolls are baking, we're gonna get started on the frosting so that they're ready to go as soon as these come out. In a mixing bowl, we're going to add some melted butter, a little bit of cream cheese, of course, vanilla, and whole milk. We're gonna use the whisk attachment on our mixer and mix that at medium high speed until everything's combined. And then we're gonna slowly add powdered sugar one cup at a time until we get the consistency that we like. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wow. There they are, the biggest cinnamon rolls you ever did see. I cannot believe how big these got. This one started to overflow a little bit, so I had to like take them out and clean them up a little. Um, I think if I didn't proof them for as long, I wouldn't have had this problem, but honestly, I'm not mad about it. I think they're gonna be so much better that they're like big and poofy. Also, I took them out about three minutes before 25 minutes because my least favorite thing is when cinnamon rolls are overbaked, when they're super hard and crunchy. Like I like them to be soft and gooey and doughy. So I took them out right as soon as I saw they were golden brown and I made lots of frosting, which I think should help. Oh, I wanna eat these so bad, but we're going to wait 10 minutes. You don't wanna put the frosting on right as soon as they come out of the oven. Otherwise it'll just melt everywhere and it'll be a huge sticky mess. So we're gonna let these cool down for about 10 minutes and then we'll put the frosting on. A few moments later. Here we go. I'm just gonna drizzle this. Ah, oh my gosh! There is no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just drizzling it all over. wait to eat this. I'm going right for the center. The long awaited first bite. Here we go. Cheers. Oh. You know how you picture waking up on Christmas morning to fresh cinnamon rolls that are ooey and gooey and soft and delicious? That is this. This. Oh, they're so good. And there's not one part of them that is dry so far. I cannot believe I've never made these before. This is amazing. Both options were great, but if you have the time, 
This is so worth it. Oh man. Takeaways from this video. Don't microwave the cinnamon rolls for four minutes. Follow the instructions and you'll be fine. And these cinnamon rolls are the best cinnamon rolls on the earth. That is a fact. Well, I hope you liked this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. I wish I could ship you some of these cinnamon rolls because there's no way I'm gonna be able to eat both pans of these by myself. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I hope you have an amazing day and we'll see you next week. The recipe's re- Blah. Oh, these are so good. I need another bite.